Oh, I had a great time at uh, Diving Talks in, in Lisbon. Um, it's a beautiful venue, it's a beautiful city. Um, I get very uh, focused on my scientific work. Um, of course, I'm always asked to speak about decompression diving safety. That's my area of, of expertise. So it was great to see um, other aspects of diving that I, I don't get the opportunity to think about. So the great images um, from the photographers, uh, I enjoyed that. Um, some of the stuff, you know, I'm, I'm aware of Pete and Becky's stuff, and and uh, but I've never seen Tom's stuff. But uh, was really impressed by uh, Nuno Sa's um, images of of very large sea creatures, and I've never really seen anything about the Azores either. So so it was fantastic. I wish I uh, well, I hope one day I get an opportunity to to dive in that area as well. Uh, the atmosphere was fantastic. Uh, I love those sort of events with. Uh, um, you know, a couple hundred really engaged divers. They're there to learn about diving, share their experiences about diving. Um, uh, it, it's really invigorating um, compared to going to just a, a pure scientific meeting. So um, great atmosphere. Um, yeah. Well, I, I spoke with um, a lot of them. There, there were obviously quite a few people there that I, that I already knew, but many more that I didn't. So... Uh, yeah, I had lots of conversations with the um, with, with the other attendees. Um, based on my particular area of interest, I actually usually have a lot of people asking me questions about their, their personal diving that I'm not always able to answer, but it's always fascinating to, to see what people are doing and what they're thinking about. So I, I really enjoyed seeing some of the... Uh, photo exhibits and the, and the photography talks, but um, I was really inspired by the two talks about seafloor habitats um, by Phil Short and by uh, Cousteau. And uh, it was uh, really exciting to see um, that those two organizations, and I understand there to be others, are uh, trying to return to, to living on the seafloor long term. That's, that's exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that these types of meetings that bring together really engaged divers to talk about diving is um, really important to keep the industry um, vibrant um, and, uh, uh, and to keep these people connected. Um, you know, other than just on the internet where people don't necessarily always show their best side. So it's great getting people face to face um, and to, to people learn about stuff they don't know about. So, you know, for instance, I've never really, well, for a long, it's been a long time since I worked in the diving industry, in the recreational diving industry. It's been probably 40 years. So it was great to hear the talks about, um, marketing um, with respect to, to growing the diving industry um, by um, a couple of the speakers. Um, so it was great that you get outside your area of expertise and then remember why you got into this um, 40 years ago. So it's fantastic. Oh, well, just um, seeing that such a, such a diversity of talks on, on a range of subjects um, often meetings, particularly diving meetings that I go to are, are quite focused on, on one area. And this was very broad. Um, so we got a, a, a lot of different information from different people um, on different topics in a very short period of time. I'd love to come back if, um, if I'm invited. I'm not sure that, that this year is going to work for me because of the, uh, um, the timing, but I, I, I will definitely be back at, at diving talks. But, uh, that was an interesting question because we're actually about to have a review of undersea medicine uh, in the next couple of weeks, looking at exactly that question. Uh, and a number of people who were at the last diving talks are actually part of that, uh, but it's 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 for the U.S. Navy. Um, and so I've actually been preparing a little bit about that. And um, uh, I, I think the big way forward is for us to be able to measure um, something about our bodies in real time while we're diving underwater. And I think that that's probably going to be 
uh, bubbles, what we call venous gas emboli, measured with some sort of submersible device, and then using that um, in real time to into a dive computer, for instance, and you would adjust your decompression based on what's going on in your body rather than just a theoretical algorithm that's that's in dive computers now. So I'm, I'm actually quite um, optimistic. So the, the approach that I just mentioned wouldn't really predict the risk. It would be trying to control it. Um, so we would individually rather than on a population basis. Um, so you would be trying to make everyone end up their dive with some low level of risk. You don't want to be too low because that's inefficient, but a level that's not, much, not not too much decompression, but very low, low risk of decompression sickness. Um, there are devices being developed to measure these, to measure VGE, um, like, you know, in real time and, and submersible. There's a lot of issues. I mean, it'll be hard to do, but I think maybe in five years, there'll be something that uh, could measure. And then we'll need to collect lots of data to figure out how to use it. But maybe, maybe 10 to 20 years, I think we could do that. I think I wish people would ask more about the importance of studying this. What is the importance of studying um, decompression sickness actually in people doing real dives rather than in laboratories in, in animals, which is, is important work too, but um, you really don't know what happens until you, until you try something in humans, um, see if it works.